Philomena, thanks for dropping in to us this evening. And you're looking extremely well after all those years of hard work on the road. Thank you very much, Frank, and it's a pleasure to be on your new show. Philomena, tell our listeners and our viewers out there where it all started. It, it, it started with the Old Cross Killy Band. That's right, the Old Cross Killy Band, 1962, on the 11th of May. I went to, I, my first night was in Arbo Hall, and I was the Old Cross Killy Band. And we were, at that time, we did a, a lot of uh, Irish music. I, in fact, I was only singing a, an odd song in between the Cayleys. It was a, they did, were an old Cayley band that time. Then after a couple of years, we changed our... Well, we didn't change the name. We just changed the music a bit. We started doing barn dances and old-time waltzes. And then after that, we changed our name to the Country Flavour. Right. So the Country Flavour, we were together for 12 years. And after 12 years, we decided we would have another change, so we went and we had the Ramblin' Men, and that's the year I got married to Tom. That's very important. That of course, Pia Tom, your husband, that's Tom right, Quinn, yes. uh, was the piano player in the band. That's right, yeah, in 1974. An accordion player, of course. That's right, and uh, that's, that's the year that the Ramblin' Men started. So it uh, just went from there, like we did very, very well. In fact, that first year we were with the Ramblin' Men, we did, about, uh, for a few years afterwards, we were doing about seven nights a week. And business was, it was great at the time, you know. And Your first trip into a recording studio, that must have been a, a nerve-wracking uh, experience. For oh, it was, uh, it was in Belfast. Uh, with, uh, actually, we did, uh, so it was uh, Jim Aiken, uh, Dolphin Records at the time. And we recorded a song called uh, My Little Son. And uh, then we did Old Arbo, I think, was on the B side of it. So it went from there. And then the first record that we ever got played on the radio was one called You're Here Today and Gone Tomorrow. And it used to be played, it was played on the Peter Murphy show. I'll never forget it. We were, we were away on holiday one time and we spent the whole day waiting on this song to come on. And it must have been on for about two seconds. Right. <laughs> and that was, my, that, was, that was the first record that I ever got played on the radio. And it, it, it stormed from then, uh, out on the road, a seven or eight piece band, a road crew, a, probably an old transit van or oh, the some, start, something like that. Whenever we started yeah. off, first we, were, we were, had a car. We had a, a car and, and we used to call it a bull cart. And that's the one, all the gear was in the, in the bull cart and the rest of us were sitting on top of other in the car. <laughs> There was a bit eight of us. You, you also got married around that time as well. You, you fell in love while being on the road. Oh, that's right. But this was a wee bit after I started with the Old Cross. I got married about 12 years later, myself and Tom. Right. And uh, that was 1974. And then... So then we had three children, Aidan, Mary, Aidan and Carol. Right. Of course, your son Aidan, can I... Your son Aidan is a very successful artist one of the new breed of country oh, singers. That's right. Well, Aidan's doing very, very well for himself at the minute now. Right, and I know that uh, Aidan will be coming into the studio to me uh, shortly and we'll be playing um, uh, some of his records as well and some of his DVDs. But go back to yourself, Philomena. You also were one of the lucky people to get to Nashville and that would be a big experience oh, it back was in indeed. those days. Well, we, when we went to Nashville, I think it was in the it was early 70s when we went to Nashville first. It was actually Hank Lachlan. We were doing a tour with Hank Lachlan. Tony Lockman was managing the band at the time. And uh, uh, Hank Lachlan organised a trip to, um, over to Nashville for us. And it was, we were record, going in to record at the same time. I think it was the very early 70s. Uh, and uh, oh no, it was around about seventy-five because uh, Tony Lockman was managing us at the time. I can't remember now because, like, I'm a senior citizen now. But anyway, um, we went into the studio and we recorded. I think we I recorded with three albums that first time I went over, and I also appeared in the Grand Old Opry uh, along with Porter Wagner. Right. And we had a fantastic time all together, and I really enjoyed it. And. But then after that, the years, as the years went on, I was back quite a few times and I appeared a good few times with Porter on, on the Grand Old Opry and did a few TV sh uh, shows with him out in the Opryland Park, which isn't there anymore, but uh, we, I did with Marty Robbins and 
I met uh, loads and loads of different artists over there in Nashville when I was over. Who was your favourite artist uh, of the American country artists? Well, I suppose time? I would have to say, well, when, when I started out first, really, um, the first singer that I heard was Hank Williams. But then I got some records of Kitty Wells and Patsy Klein. And, you know, but as far as the singers were concerned, my all-time favourite singer would have been George Jones. George. Ah, I love George. George. I did. I love Lord George. He Jones. Last, That's uh, right. He passed away. Actually, we were in Nashville. Uh, I think the day that he we left Nashville, the day he passed away. Right. Another artist that was very close to you, um, and I know you've done many uh, tours. The late Billy Joe Spears. That's right. Indeed. Uh, that there was a story behind it. Myself and Billy Joe. 1975, I heard this song on the radio one night when we were coming home from a gig and it was the blanket on the ground and it just all oh, just hit me right away and I thought this we have to do this so Tony Luckman sent to Nashville uh, over to America for it we, whenever we got it back straight into the, into the studio we recorded it and it became a very big hit for me and later on in that same year uh, I was doing a festival over in Peterborough, I think it was, and I was introduced to Billy Joe Spears. I hadn't a clue who Billy Joe Spears was at the time, to be honest. And then she said, um, she came over and uh, somebody introduced her to me and she says, I, I, I'll use this word, but just can give it a bleep. She says, are you the bitch that stole my song? <laughs> And she was really, to be honest, like she, she, I think, you know, she was telling me uh, sort of in a funny way, but at the same time, I think she meant it. But uh, we got to, to know each other very well over the years. And for the, pa the last six years of Billy Joe's life, we toured together and we had a ball. We, uh, you know, we became, we were more like, like you know, uh, sisters than anything else because we got to know each other very well. And we would go on the stage there and the two of us would do the blanket together. And we used to have a bit of banter between the two of us, I used to have to go out and help her to pull her tights up and put shoes on her on the stage. And it was more like a, a comedy act than anything else, but sadly she passed away. I actually uh, was allowed you had a late, late show appearance that you'd done in Ireland. Uh, that's right, well, you were indeed, and that's, uh, we did the blanket that night. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Beautiful. Uh, she was, was a great, she was a great woman, now I have to.